Kev Lynch ja P.T. Og det glæder sig. West Ham's crop of young talent has become very much victims of the club's own success. Youngsters such as Sonny Perkins, Langello, Okaflex, Baptiste Alessi, Chesters were all given time on the bench this season but made no real impact in the first team. And although there have been complaints from many fans, me included, that could be mainly explained by just how well West Ham have played throughout the 21 20 to season roll the titles for today's show And it's not just me this evening. It's the, it's the oh, DJ, Russie B. It's a very hot Russie B. I've just seen oh. you fanning yourself. Ooh. You all right? How you doing, mate? You all right? Oh, I'll tell you what. Well, it's hot down here. It's hot down here. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. It was, it, was, uh, it was a bit sticky here today as well. Everyone always does. That's <laughs> where, where I live. It's like, no, it's not. No, it's not. But yeah, no, it was all right. It was sticky. Hay fever. Yeah, it's kicking not a fan. in. Not a fan. Nah, nah, nah. If you're new around here, though, what have they got to do, Russ? Uh, they got to like and subscribe and do stuff. That's what they got to do. Yep. Yeah, That's absolutely. what I do. So click that because we are on the march, Russ. No, we're not on the march to 13,000. No, we're well, not. It's, no, it's not, it's not really a march, is it? It's more of a skip. We're skipping to yeah. 13,000. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy at the moment. Yeah. But we're on the way to 20k. So if you are watching and you have not subscribed, please do. Please get us there. I've got the target. We've got another six months to go. We're going to do it, Russ. I'm telling you now. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. We've got loads of cool stuff coming up as well. So loads of different people as well coming up. So it's not just going to be us. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely don't worry we're uh we're, we're yeah we're doing loads of stuff behind the scenes but anyway we'll bring that to you when it does happen but exactly. listen get your comments in and we will go through the comments as we go along i've done and have been doing and we've both been doing obviously several videos over the last couple of weeks and months and we've been talking a lot about the youth of west ham and, and how they are maybe struggling to make the impact in on the first team now I did this graph. I mean, you'll be impressed, Russ. You probably are looking at it and thinking, oh, well, you could have done this, you could have done that a little bit better. But it really it really does ram home, you know, West Ham's average age of our yeah. our, our current squad. We're third in the league for having the, the oldest average age in well, the group. I mean, Watford and Burnley have been relegated, isn't it? So, so in theory, now we're number one. <laughs> so it does highlight. And then you look at, like, Arsenal, who average age is 24 and a half, 25. Mm. And then the gap starts to open up a little bit. But... You know, if you're to believe what David Moyes is wanting to achieve at West Ham, which is to, you know, the Red Bull model, look at a lot of the young players. And right now you can't help but think that from all the reports we listen to, from all the games we watch, from the players we see, that we're producing some of the best talent that we've saw for many years. Yeah, definitely. What's your thoughts? Um, I mean, you know, we've obviously fortunate enough to, to talk to a lot of the um, obviously, a lot of the club ambassadors are actually associated with the youth side, and and they all talk about how great how great it is coming through. And you know, you just look at look at how we did this season. You know, in the various youth teams. So you know, like the PL two runners up for the under twenty threes. We did uh, the under eighteen Premier League runners up as well. We uh, the seventeens London Cup winners, fifteens. Um, Oh, floodlight shield the floodlit shield cup um as well so you know they're winning in all the all the different age groups um but as you said we've you know there's been times this year where we think oh he's got to, he's got to play some of the kids because we're yeah. down to the bare bones and even to the point where you've had aaron cresswell play left center back of two set on the back two 
because yeah. we haven't had any centre backs, and he still hasn't put any any of our you know, any of these, these class in. And you know, I've, I've seen them play, and they're good. They're good players. They are some good players in that yeah. in that youth setup. And and we continue to buy youth team players like Dan Rigg, obviously recently. Um, he's going to be in that youth setup, and obviously we've got Anthony Marshall. Um, and no, Callum Marshall. Um, oh, Marshall's going to say Marshall. Yeah, yeah Marshall. <laughs> and see Marshall. Callum Marshall in the in the wind in the January transfer January transfer window as well. And you know, it does seem that we're trying to bulk up that youth team with the best youth players that we can uh, we can you know, sort of cherry picking them. But it doesn't seem. But then there's a transition from there to the first team, and that's so that, think, that, and that's changed. You know from the days of old when you're looking at a lot of the young players and we will come into a lot of, I'm going to bring up some of the older players. I'm going to bring up some of the more recent players that maybe have left West Ham for different reasons. Mm. Um, but times have changed because these young players are now looking over their back and seeing the best talent from around the country come in and try and prove a point. Ocoflex, for example, um, you know, and Equa, when we didn't have to look at these players, it was always the talent we were bringing through the ranks. And then you see players like Holland being released um, and it's becoming harder and harder for the youth talent to make it. However, there is a lot of talent there. And yeah. one player in particular that has been linked to leaving West Ham, according to reports, is Sonny Perkins, the 18-year-old striker. Um, and, you know, the rumour was that Leeds were interested in bringing him in because they've got a history of of, of quickly progressing their young players through the ranks. And I think... As of last season, um, Gilhart and Greenwood broke through to the team because I think Patrick Bamford had an injury. So there's a spot in the under 23s for the Leeds team, in the Leeds team, and 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 because he's probably seen that career path um, going through Russ, he's probably sitting there thinking, "Is this the right thing?" Now, when I think of that link, I'm disappointed. I'm like, "Why are West Ham not tying down the boy? Why are we not making sure that we've got to keep one of the best young talents at this club?" But do you blame a player like Perkins for thinking, I want game time? I want to actually physically play football? No, I, no, not at all. And I know we're going to be talking about some of the players um, who have done that. I mean, you know, it does seem every season we've got some sort of, every sort of close season, we have some sort of crazy sort of youth team sort of um, issue. Whether, you know, two years ago it was in Gakia. And then we sold Grady Dean Garner. Last year, it was Ben Johnson, wasn't it? It was a bit of, we didn't really know what was going to happen with Ben Johnson. And that sort of carried on for this summer as well. But Sonny Perkins seems to be the the main sort of debate, youth team debate um, that we're talking about at the moment. I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's not, he's, you know, he, he wants to play. I mean, to be honest, he's broken into the first team. He's, was he 18, 19? He's, he's played three games, I think, in the first team. And uh, he's got a taste of it. And, yeah. you know, he sees what's going around. He sees what Moyes is trying to bring in in terms of the summer, in terms of the likes of forward players to compete with Antonio, potentially. So he's thinking, well, where the fuck am I going to be? You know, so... Yeah. And it's, it's it's at the same time. It's at the same time as he's coming... I know he's got another year left in his contract, but it's sort of it's that time of the year where you go, OK, well, I'm a first-team player now. Not really, mate, but you are technically, but not really, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I think that's the thing, though, when you've got a player of the of, of his ability, 17 goals in all competitions for West Ham's under-23s mm. and under-18s, even though he often played slightly deeper in the team to accommodate another player, Armstrong Okaflex. And he's yeah. the difference between Okaflex and Perkins is Perkins has been with West Ham a lot longer. Okaflex came in only but last year and has been hitting the heights as well. But you felt like there were several occasions this season. You thought, are we going to see the likes of Okaflex come in and be given a chance? What, yeah. um, what's your thoughts there? Well, even more so because he's been bought in. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, you know, whereas, whereas someone like Perkins is, has been, is, has gone through the ranks, so to speak, Okaflex was bought in, you know, he, he yeah. was, uh, and that would have been a, a deal, which always would have signed off on. Um, yeah. And so you thought he would have been, you know, they saw enough in him to, to nab him from Celtic to go into, you know, to go into the, into the first team at West Ham, or at least sort of break into it. I mean, he's a fantastic player. He's the type of player that West Ham fans would love to see um, because he's just, 
so talented, mm. so skillful. And if you're looking at the likes of, you know, we've spoken before, maybe the likes of Benny moving on, he could easily fit in that spot without yeah. a doubt. But he's got pace as well. That's one thing that Ben Rahm, he's got, he's got rapid pace. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and he could, and, and, you know, and then again, in the day, if, if, if he, if we did move Ben Rama on and, uh, and I mean, Okaflex could get his, a spot on that, on that bench next season, there's nine subs every game. So, you know, they're going to be filled up. The bench is going to be filled up with the under 23s yeah. unless we start yeah. buying players now, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, yeah. but no, I'm a big fan of Okaflex. Do you think, I mean, the rumour was kicking about with regards to Perkins, for example, that his agent was getting involved and they were requesting quite high weekly yeah. salary. Um, does he have the right to do that? Is that a I, reason I, why we're not, you know? I don't think so. Honestly, I don't think so. I think there's, I think, that, and I don't think it's indicative of, of Perkins. I think it's indicative of, of of youth team players now rather than yeah. rather than maybe five, ten years. I mean, you know, you, we've been to those ex-player nights where they talk about, you know, uh, I can't remember who it was. It was, it was someone I was listening to the other day, and they were talking about Teddy Sheringham. It was, yes, a reasonably recent. And uh, Teddy would, it might even be Noble was talking about it. And Teddy would would literally drag Noble into the office and say to the manager, and say, oh, I need to be on more money now. You know, he needs to be on more money. And they, they never had agents. You know, these the back in the day, they never had agents. It was their mum and dads and stuff that were doing it. And so, you know, I think there's... If I'm right, I can't. It might have been listened to, it might be Nigel or someone like that was saying that there's there's a cap on under eighty if they're playing under twenty threes or or so, so. You know, in terms of our wage structure, it's a couple of grand a week they'd be on. Yeah. Um. So you know, in terms of astronaut, so yeah, they say he's asking for a lot of money. What was he asking? Eight grand a week, ten grand a week. Seems a lot for someone who's only eighteen and only made three first team appearances. Yeah. Um. Unfortunately, it does seem. But I think it's indicative of football itself. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know. definitely. I mean, there's another player to talk about that's um, strongly linked to leaving the club, and that's Emmanuel Longello. Yeah. Um, 21 years old. He did make his debut in the Europa League um, last year. Well, oh well, that's a lie. He did come on as a sub, did he not? For against Hull City in Hull the City League Cup. Game, yeah. 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 Um, but he has struggled for first team chances since that um, appearance, and therefore he's going to look. He's he's potentially looking set to leave the club. Um, with a host of Premier League clubs, Championship clubs, and several clubs in Scotland keeping tabs on the situation. You know, Bournemouth are in the market for a left-back. Um, apparently, Rangers are looking at him, and that could depend on what happens with Calvin Bassey, who has been linked with West Ham and Aston Villa, just to name a few. Um, but the reports are saying that West Ham are con saying that, that the Langello's not ready or that level yet, but he's going to have a desire to play first team football on a regular basis yeah. and a move away would suit all sides and you can't help but blame players for wanting to play first team football um because they, because they need to play first team football yeah it's a job that's that's yeah. why that's why they become a footballer they didn't become a footballer to play on the 23s they came yeah. a footballer to to play to play, play in the first team whatever first team that may be i think what's ironic with someone like long get long get yellow is actually today i was on the hammers headlines i was there's a, a, a we were linked and i've been linked to about hundreds of players but it was a 19 year old udinese left back we've been linked with who's like his starlet but he's been but then he's 19 he's and you know reading his report is very similar to Longello in terms of his playing style but he's played 32 games in Serie A this season yeah so yeah. you know and I think that's 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 the trip that's the trick now and I know we'll talk about that a bit later on but you can for you know for all the tentative purposes the French League the German League the Italian Leagues they're getting players playing who are not 18, 19, making 30, 35 appearances in their respective top divisions. So yeah. why wouldn't you, you know, as a manager, you know, I want the best players. I want the best young players as well for sell on. I'd rather do that than maybe invest in someone who might make it, who might not make it. Yeah. Yeah. But what you do see is the transition between this, this, this league has changed now. This under 23 yeah. league has changed. So, uh, but what you're actually seeing is a lot of older players playing at that level and some people are saying that that level isn't as good as what it used to be. And we've actually got a, a segment from when uh, Pat Holland came on the show, didn't he? Um, yeah. uh, so should we play that and let everyone hear from the man himself? Yeah, it's, um, worth, it's worth just saying. So Pat, Patsy is obviously still 
heavily involved in scouting. I think he's scouting at Millwall at the moment. So he is very much still on. He knows, you know, he's, his football brain is incredible. And also his understanding of the youth team set up as well, yeah. because he's still involved in the game. Yeah. Have a, have a listen to this and we'll talk about what he says after it. What's the general, uh, in, in terms of obviously going to see the, the sort of the reserve, or the under 23s as they're called, isn't it? Um, generally, is it, is it a really high standard you're seeing, particularly, you know, as you said, Loftus Road and Palace and sort of the boys, obviously West Ham's under 23s, second in the PL2. Um, they won 5-0 yesterday, but sort of general standard you're seeing, is it good? It's, it's a different game. It's uh, very tactical. You mm. can see that they've been coached in terms of our shape and um, and their jobs and what, what to do and what not to do. Uh, physically, I think they're stronger, they're taller. Some mm. some of them, not all of them. Um, technically, I'm not so sure where there's a great change in that. Mm. Um, and individual players, maybe not as prevalent as they were when I was a young player. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, we're be, you know, because obviously it moved from sort of the combination league, you know, the reserve leagues into sort yeah. of the under 23s. And there's been lots of people talking about the differences between, you know, the under 23s, obviously, where you used to get a lot of the old, the first teamers play for the reserves, but obviously not necessarily the under 23s now. And so, is he so obviously it's. Is it? A, is it? I'm thinking. Is it sort of a sort of quite a hard learning curve for the under twenty three sort of breaking into the first team because they're not being played with first teamers? Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've had exactly this conversation. I had it um, yesterday, and I had it. I must have had it on my own today because I didn't meet anybody. <laughs> but I was on the phone to somebody, and we were talking about it. And yeah. strange enough, on Monday I was uh, invited down the training ground. Uh, Prior to the Iron Track game, yeah, uh, there was me, Mervyn Day, and uh, Keith Robson, yeah. And part of the day was that we met David Moyes, yeah. But the other question I threw at him as a, a, a side ball basically was I watched the reserves the other week, the 23s, and of which the back four were 21, yeah, 21 years of age, 22, and 22. And I said, in my uh, opinion. It's an under-19 league, basically. Mm. So why are these boys playing at that level? There's no next step other yeah. than the first team. Mm. So he said, how old was you when you got in the first team? I said, I was 18, but I said, I never stayed there. I said, it was like glancing. I maybe the following season, I had five or six games. Mm. And, it, and he said he felt that it was the players were different and they needed just that fraction more time. Mm to develop he yeah. felt so 21 would be an age where he was looking at them and considering them with more maybe positivity in bringing them into the squad it's see, the thing is i think i'm not saying that the old managers weren't under pressure they most certainly were mm. but i think the modern day manager is under extreme pressure yeah. yeah you're totally right you're totally so right. He, he cannot afford to to gamble with a young player as much as we we romanticise about it a little bit, think, oh, why don't you play him and give him a go? Mm. It's it's very difficult. Yeah, and you're telling. It's a valid point he makes, though, about romanticising about it because it's true. We do, we absolutely do, and we want the players to come through so bad. I really do, and I know every other West Ham fan probably thinks the same. But it's like it's too much of a gamble. Yeah, to it's true. To, to take the risk and and it's what we we're saying. You know, we're saying at the moment. You know, I mean, at the moment we're trying to say. Oh, we need a forward. We need we need a striker. We need a striker. We need a top name striker to compete with Antonio. And in the next breath, people are up in arms about Sonny Perkins wanting to leave to get first team football. Yeah, well, it's like that is literally what we're trying to say. We, you want him to. You want to see these players come into the side, or or a Josh Cullen, or a, or a Connor yeah. Coventry, but not to the detriment of us doing well. Yeah, it's it's and it's a double edged sword. And 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 Patsy was bang on. Um, you know, the role of the manager is, is different to when it was, you know, John Law, you know, Ron Greenwood. They had the, you know, they were, they didn't, they didn't change managers as frequently back then. Mm. So they had the, and, and the money wasn't in the game. So they had to generate the players from within the academy. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it, it, I mean, Patsy's bang on, I think, when he was, what he was talking about. 
100 percent. keep your comments coming in please we will go through them as well but a name i want to bring you back to a player that was at west ham doing really well you know he came i think he scored a goal actually in he the league cup debut. and it was yeah he's, he's going to stable yeah. depot afa lion um who joined bolton wanderers at the start of the season from west ham's youth setup um and in, in his first season at bolton it was an extremely successful one um 44 appearances, scoring 14 goals, contributing to four assists, making him a popular um, at his new home. And he won the Player of the Year award. And reflecting on his first year at Bolton and the decision to go and find himself first-team football, he felt that the move couldn't come at a perfect time. And he went on and he said, for my age, it was the right time to go. I felt it for a few years. When I joined West Ham, I was 20 and came from... Silly Hall Moors in the National League. And my ambition was always to play first team football. It didn't work out for a number of reasons injuries, manager changes, all sorts. But again, I just wanted to play first team. And every window I was looking to get out on loan. There you go. You can hear it from the man himself, Russ. And that's a key message coming from a lot of players and even more so from even experienced players, Russ, because yeah. they're advising the young ones and they're actually saying, go out and get first team experience. Um, Ben Foster talks about it on his Fozcast. He's, he he says it all the time. He says, when I've got a young player there and I'm saying, no, there's no point in you sitting on that bench and sitting on that bench and waiting. Go and get the first team football because you're never going to learn by being yeah. on the bench. Yeah, true. It really yeah. rammed home when he said that comment. It's true, though. I mean, and and and, and we there is a clip we've got with Izzy um, uh, talking about that because obviously, and I think that's the change is because of this change to the PL, to the you know, under 23 league or you know, PL2 league, you don't get that experience. You know, you're playing with people who are who are the same as you. Yeah. You know, the same the same as you. Whereas someone like, you know, I mean, we we can play Izzy's clip in a minute, but he gonna, he, yeah, yeah. he talks about. Well, I mean, I won't sort of allude it, but he talks about basically how much he's he learned playing reserve team football, yeah, which he wouldn't have got if he was playing. You know, and he won. I mean, he's he's actually the last. Well, technically, he's the last captain to have lifted a, an FA Cup. There you go. Uh, albeit the FA Youth Cup, but he was um, one of the last captains to lift silverware yeah. at West Ham. Well, shall we go and listen to him then and see what yeah, he says? Yeah, to him. He's Here he now. is. I had the best teachers there, like Stuart <laughs> Pierce. Like I've had a reserve game with him, right? And he showed me, like, I, I was a talker anyway, like, coming through 15, 16, you know, I was Tony Carr anyway. I was a talker. Yeah. That's why I became captain. I was a leader of the team and stuff like that. But playing with Stuart Pierce, right, he just... I just saw something different and he he guided me through that resi game without doing anything i did all the running right that's when i knew this guy was a legend yeah. he just took the whole game and he just bossed it clean sheet and i've never seen anything like it and just getting me in the right position and like getting there before i had to you know do anything stressful i was already there he was getting just you know by getting in the right positions and he taught me a lot and another person you know i played with um who played tottenham um, away, um, and I played with Ian Pierce, yes. and um, Les Ferdinand kept beating me in the air, and I'm thinking like, I'm taller than you. How the hell do you keep beating me yeah. in the air? Like, and and it was like the old tricks. He just kind of like, it will stop me jumping, and like you know, just so Pierce he just says, look, is just when he's coming because he runs. Les kind of runs sideways to you, yeah, to head it right. So he says, when he's coming, just take a step forward, block him so he can't get up, and just you don't even need to jump. And just head yeah. it. So it's just little tricks like that that you're learning from these senior pros that really is, is you know, you can't buy them. It's, it's amazing. And you can't. And that, that, as you said, for a, for a, you know, for a youngster coming through, as you said, you you got all these little, all these wily old tricks in the in the yeah. in the locker anyway for going forward. And interesting. It's I, I find it fascinating actually. It's it's really something's kind of reiterated to me and, and made me realise that. I really want these players like Alessi and Baptiste to be given a chance, but yeah. I don't know if they really are. I, because if I think about Alessi, for example, earlier in the season, when Zuma picked up an injury, mm. Ogbonna was out injured, Dawson was suspended, yeah. and then Diop picked up an injury. At that point, we were left with like no one. And at that point, if there was ever an occasion we were going to see him come back or come into the team, that was it. Yeah. And it didn't happen. Um, and I know someone else came in i'm trying to rack my brains and see if one of the players came back fit for that game i can't remember if it was zuma or something like that zuma but... came zuma came back earlier than we thought was gonna, was gonna yeah. come back wasn't it 
and but it still had no real impact on Alessi coming up. And I do think Alessi has got the ability to at least play some game time, and um, it's definitely a make a break season for him, hundred percent. But I feel like that's all we say every single year with the uh, half of yeah. our youth team. And and I think it's it's a flip. It's it, again, it's 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 sort of a seesaw because you know that they the managers will say that they're not ready, but how can they be ready unless they're not playing? So it's like yeah. it's sort of this double edged sword. You know, you want them to you want to have those options, but if they're not if not having the game time itself. As I said before, I think this year we've been a little bit unlucky in terms of you know we've had tough Carabao Cup draws. Um, we, we, you alluded to the fact that Long Get Long Longello made made his sort of first team debut the season before last. We played Hull, and you know, and the the whole game and the Charlton game in the Carabao Cup, they were full of the under twenty threes. And they, they tore both sides apart, really. Um, but it's just, yeah, I think that's that's been a function as well. But yeah, it's it's, it's it, again, it's, it's it's tricky. It is tricky. But you know, the, the other option, the option clearly is these guys need to go out on loan. They need to go yeah. out, get on loan to get to yeah. get first team football. Yeah, and we're going to come on to players like Coventry and and, and Cullen and and everything. So I can see people in the chat talking about them. Mm. But I want to talk to you about a player, Lee Hodges. Um, who was on the show as well with yourself, Russ, and he was talking a lot about what Afalayan did. You know, Lee Hodges loves and lives and breathes West Ham. Yeah. I mean, he, he can totally tell he, he, he did and does, and he, he came with a lot Love of... that shirt. Yeah, I know. He came with a lot of plaudits, didn't he, as well? Like, yeah. a lot of a lot of uh, um, history. But what we'll do is we'll actually listen to Tony Carr, what he says about Lee Hodges, and then we'll go and listen to Lee Hodges himself. And uh, let, let me know your thoughts on this one. <clears throat> and Oddie was a fantastic player. Yeah. Only small in stature, but mm. what a great player. Great feet, great turn of pace, had an eye for a goal. But got, from a very early age, got dogged down, dogged by injuries to his knees. Mm. Yeah. And he's, you know, he's still got dodgy knees to this day. But uh, he's one that you'd have thought he's going to make it, this kid. I think if it had stayed injury free, I don't think there'd have been any doubt. So he was a massive disappointment not to have gone on and done more, really. Um, and it wasn't his own fault because he had the attitude, he yeah. had the ability, he had the passion, he loved the game, loved West Ham. Uh, big mates with Frank. You know, yeah. when I interviewed Frank Lampard, that is, um, he said that at 15 years of age, he, he was nowhere near the best player in the team. He said mm -hmm. Lee Hodges was better than me. Yeah. And he was right. Mm -hmm. He was right. Oji was a great player. So mm. Oji was the standout, really, for me, the one that really should have, and through no fault of his own, didn't go no. all the way, really. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, as obviously we've had we've had Hodgie on and we've spoken about that. You know, it was part of a... Uh, actually, it, was, it wasn't intentional, but we interviewed Hodgie, Izzy, and we interviewed Newt, literally like one after each right. other. So, yeah. And all of them, you know, took a decision to... They could have carried on and and maybe been a squad bit player or drop down divisions and have careers at Scunthorpe yeah. and Swansea and yeah. you know and so yeah but as you said because they they love they love the game they love, they yeah. wanted to be involved in the first team but yeah um yeah I know exactly what you mean about Hodgie. Um epic this is live just to prove the point this is live don't you worry we are and here we're live. and we're live yes we are yes we are but. It's really interesting to hear from Tony Carr, you know, the man, and the legend, the myth, whatever you want to call him. Um, he, he, he's Tony Carr's just what he's done for West Ham. I mean, here's just a picture of all the players during the testimonial mm. he had. He's part of that golden era. Of oh, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, everyone. I mean, it, it starts. It starts. His, his first intake was Alan Kerbishley and Paul Brush. Yeah, that's it. and his last intake technically was Declan Rice. Yeah. Um, and he takes full he doesn't take full credit for Declan Rice, but he was like, <laughs> he signed Declan Rice. So yeah. everyone in between that's come from the academy has gone through that man, and we're getting him back on soon. Um, probably in a week, a couple of weeks time, he's going to come yeah. back on um, because uh, never had so many bloody questions to ask him. Well, we were actually going to have him on the other night, but we couldn't do the show the other night. I was <laughs> gutted, I was devastated. So I was like, what a person to bring on and talk about this situation. But yeah. Um, but the thing is, you know, it's interesting what he says about Lee Hodges, and we've got a segment about Lee Hodges talking about how important it was for him to go and get game time. So let's take a listen to Lee Hodges. Because obviously they, they offered you a contract. If, if, it's, if it's meant to be, they offered you a contract and you yeah. take it down to, to go to Scunthorpe. Yeah, to go to yeah, Scunthorpe. Which, which so. everyone on that 
would be sort of baffled by it. Basically, um, I just asked the gaffer, is there any chance I'll ever start? Yeah. Will I get an opportunity to start? And he said, I can't, uh, I, I can't promise you that. I said, I'm not asking for a promise, but I'm travelling up and down the country and I've probably done it for about three years. Yeah. And I was probably, sit, if it was 14 subs, I was 15th man every time and that. Yeah, yeah. And I just thought, there's got to come a time that I want to play every week. I'm, mm. I'm not one to just sit, keep sitting in the reserves and getting this and that. I wanted to just play first team and have something to go for, whether it be a promotion, a relegation. Sure. Just that, So, he wasn't very happy at all. He went pretty uh, pretty mad at me. But I think he, he understood it in the end, maybe. I'm not sure you have to ask him, but I mean, yes. for me, it was just, I just wanted to go and play. Maybe yeah. it wasn't the right time, but for me, um, I wanted that to makes sense, man. He used to send sense. me out on loan everywhere. I yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you, yeah, you, I mean, again, what's, 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 yeah, what is, what's that like? We've obviously had a lot of players, yeah. we have people like a lot of like, say, junior players who on the channel, and we've asked them about going out on loan, and some were like, oh, it was experience and stuff, but you just must have just got on your wick, to be honest. Well, to keep I, going out on loan. You know what it was? I was going out on loan, and when I come back, the gaffer was like, they're raving about you, it's brilliant. Yeah. And then at the team that I was at trying to sign me, um, like Plymouth try and sign me and that and then but it wasn't making no difference to my possibilities get to get yeah, in the team. That makes sense, yeah. So if I thought that I went away and the gaffer thought, right, go and do well away from here. Fair. I mean but I mean, you know, you went you went to Scunthorpe, you went to another team in Claret and Blue, um yeah. called Iron. the Iron. Yeah, yeah. Iron. Iron. And obviously you played loads of games for Scunthorpe. That was like your main club. And yeah. and as you said, you know, you you know, you were justified in terms of making your decision at a relatively young age yeah. to not stay at West Ham and go to like lower go to a lower league team to play yeah. football. So you know, you still then went and you said that you made, you played a, 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 over I don't hundred and something yeah, a million, a, a loads of games. Loads of games, yeah. Loads no, of games. I, I mean, for me, I, it's probably a I couldn't win either way because yeah, people say you should have stayed and mate, you'd have never known. But yeah. and people say, oh well, at least he didn't hang about and just take the money and just sit on the True. bench and not get involved. So uh, for me, I just wanted to play. There's nothing better than getting up on a Saturday morning and you've got a first team game can have as many reserve games as much as you want but mm. the first team game you've got the butterflies you've got the night before you're in the set pieces on the friday you've got a buzz about you there's a proper yeah. crowd there i just I, for me it was just i just loved playing the game on a on a saturday morning and yeah you just can't take that feeling and no uh, i mean yeah whether it was the right decision i'm not totally sure but for me that at that time i did think it was wrong so the thing is i think a lot of people don't especially in my era don't remember i remember lee hodges but i don't remember the plaudits that came with him no and i think i think the trouble is we've in 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 that time so to speak social media wasn't around as much yeah. you know it was it was as you said it was the hammers news fanzines unless you went to the youth team games you know or the the, the, the videotapes because yeah, that's or, yeah. that's how we really came about frank lampard yeah. really wasn't it but I, I, that's what I mean. If, for example, like now, I reckon if you'd ask anyone, you know, I guarantee some people don't watch the under-23s, but they still know the likes of Ocaflex. They still know Ashby, maybe because they're getting to the first team. Eguan, they know all these players because social media. There we yeah. go. So, you know, still know about these players already. You know, Ocaflex hasn't made a first team appearance, but I guarantee everyone knows of him. And that's the thing, you know, and... Someone like Hodgie, I mean, you know, even more so than probably some other players, he's a West Ham nut. Yeah. He's a West Ham fan. And, you know, he, he, he took the choice to go away from his boyhood club to pursue his career rather than just sit on the bench, which he could have done. H said, H said that he'd get games. He'd get a games. He wouldn't be first. He wouldn't get a starter. He wouldn't be a first name on the team sheet, but he would get games. Yeah. But he didn't want it. He yeah. didn't want it. He wanted to be first teamers. A fair yeah. play to him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got, I've, I've got, I've got two, we've got two more clips coming up. I, I'm going to bring the next one in, which is Tim Breaker. You, you've got a bit of background story about, about Tim Breaker, why he's knowledgeable on the kind of youth setup. So Tim, as well, very similar to Patsy. Um, he's still very much. I, I think actually this is the first time in probably about 
since he retired that he's actually not doing not working at the moment but again he's he's a scout he's a scout and he is still and until recently he was he was doing a scout i think he was i think it was luton and a few others he was scouting for um so again tim's got um a good understanding of of the of the youth team setup and how it's working um and you know obviously there are a few uh, audio issues with Tim when we interviewed him because <laughs> he, he had like Trevor Morley's Wi-Fi it seems but um <laughs> but you you'll be able to understand what you say yeah you will see a difference in terms of the development of the kids at that a- early age because it, it does seem to be it doesn't seem to be particularly West Ham a lot of kids breaking through like they used to be if that makes sense I think it's very very hard for those lads to get up to the speed of um Know, men's first team football, if you like, and I, I, I very much disagree with the situation. I hold the, what's you know the, um, the structure of it personally, mm. because I just think if you say you've got a young lad who's developing at 18, 19, 20, 21, say, and he's becoming a man, and he's playing against other young kids, so he doesn't mm. get used to playing against men. Uh, the physical side of it, you know, the know-how side of it. When's he going to do that? The only time they're going to do it is going out on loan. They're not going to do it in the under 23s because, you know, the days of the reserve football when the old pro would be playing next year, talking you through it, don't happen anymore. anymore. It, doesn't, it just does not happen, you know. They might get involved in training sometimes, but it's not the same, you know. So they, even, even more so now, everybody knows the loan market is very, very important for clubs. I mean, look at Chelsea, how many players they farm yeah. out on loan. Um, but that, I think, you know, Say seven, eight, ten, maybe years ago, that wasn't quite as much as a as an important thing. The loan market it was like when I was scouting it, it was really hard to get players out on loan from, mm. from clubs and academies, and they kept them around. Whereas now it's more of a, a done thing, if you like. It's almost like they've got to get out on loan first before they even be considered for the first thing. I think the other part of it as well is there's so when you think say like a Premier League club, especially even championship clubs they've almost got the pick of Europe and the world even in terms of players who've already played you know 100 odd games in their first team in France or Spain or wherever Um, they've already got up to that level Mm. and they can go and pick in the same as they can pick a lad from their academy or another academy so um, I think it's it's even harder for those lads to come through and know the one that do fair play to them because you know you've got be, you've obviously got to be good and you don't get the chances the same do you know what I mean you, you you might be allowed a little bit of time and you know um to to sort of bed in in the first team but nowadays it's it's a lot harder, mm. a lot harder yeah think. and I think it just shows the ones that do make it from the academy how much I mean you look at the players who have come through particularly say West Ham or even like England you know you look at the likes of likes of Grealish likes of Foden Declan Rice you know these guys aren't no you know they're they literally are the top of their game you don't tend to get the sort of average players making it from the academy they have to be that upper echelon to to progress as you said because people will go and buy a, a player from France who's already got 100, 100 games under their belt in it really and, he, and he, in the championship as well, there's you know, a lot of um, foreign managers, coaches who they, they know the markets abroad. You yeah. know, they've worked and they, their contacts are there. Whereas, you know, for say English, British coaches, their market is here. So, you know, where are they going to look? So those coaches, they're going to look abroad as well, you know? Yeah, no, um, definitely. Even that's harder at, at that level as well, you know, to break through. I think it's amazing when you get such a clever insight into football how it works from these pros that's what makes you know that's what makes it worthwhile when we do this channel these shows like i'm saying that from someone sitting behind the scenes or who does these shows but you're getting i just find it fascinating i'm absolutely fascinated by it and the fact that we get to speak to them about it makes it all the better but it's so true what tim breaker says like he he absolutely advocates what lee hodge has done and afalian's done and we'll go on to the likes of well, I, um, Josh Cullen, yeah, etc. At the end of the day, it's like we, you know, we we have our we, you know, as as West Ham fans, we do have our blinkered, not blinkered, that's the wrong expression, but we have our claret and blue tinted glasses on. 
So yeah. we assume, just like you and me, that any young te- any young player comes in, wants to play for West Ham, wants to do this and stay and stay for the club forever, and da 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 da, and da 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 da, sort of utopian view. We're actually bringing on people who are who have been in the game, like Tim, like Patsy. Who are well, I mean, Patsy's a very well respected um, member of you know the the football. F- fraternity um and and he's and he says it so you know i, I take his his uh, opinions rather than maybe someone who's who's on twitter who just has an opinion you know because he's lived it he's he's been through it all he's played and he's and he's scouted um just want to say hello to our new member oh there you go mo mr mr dalek dalek <laughs> welcome thank you Good sir man. thank you very much yeah. thank you very much yeah. Um, but you yeah, know it, it, it is true, and I, I'm going to go into a bit about Tony Tony Carr, friend of the channel. You could say, um, yeah, there's so much depth of talent in the academy through all the age group. That's his comment. That's what he says. Sometimes you can become blinded by the talent that you've got. You start to look at players and think he hasn't quite got this or he hasn't quite got that. For Carr, he said Rice is a reminder that it's not always the one who catches the eye who goes on to succeed. That's a dilemma we all have as youth developers. We cannot see the future. We can only estimate it based on past experiences. And that's when he goes on and talks about Glenn Johnson. If you don't remember Glenn Johnson, he was a good player. That's what he says. But don't get me wrong. He got into our first team due to injuries. We sold him to Chelsea. He went on to play for Liverpool in uh, England. And I knew he would do well, but I could never have predicted how far he would go. So let's hear that situation Mm. from the horse's mouth himself uh, which academy graduate achieved more in their career oh that's okay so, so from from a different perspective anyone yeah. in anyone you thought well, actually they were all right but they've gone into had a, a better career than you thought they would do yeah one or two. i mean I, I wouldn't have dreamed glenn johnson would have hit the heights he hit yeah and you know, that's testament to him as an individual as a player his dedication his his uh, desire um you couldn't you couldn't have said at 15 Frank Lampard was going to have the career he had. Yeah. And I'll put my hands up and I'll say, whatever he's achieved, I admire him immensely. I know West Ham fans have got to love hate with him a little bit. Well, he'll be there on, Wednesday, be there yeah. on Sunday, won't he? Yeah, he'll be there Sunday and I hope they give him a decent reception. I wouldn't think everyone will be uh, clapping him, but for that, oh, they should because even, even now, I think he's still West Ham for and for a little bit. I really, really, even though he's his love of Chelsea because of his career there, yeah. he's still got he's still got a soft spot for us. He really has. I, I shouldn't let that out, but he has really. Oh, I'm not and, being uh, funny. He's dad, isn't it? So you got his dad yes, as well. He's he his dad, and, and you know, you you read his book, and he said the only other thing he ever wanted to do when he was a youngster was play for West Ham. Yeah. So, you know, Frank's achieved un- unbelievable things that you would you you could never have predicted at 15. You always thought he'd be a good player. And maybe get some games in the first team, but to go on and do what he did, unbelievable, unbelievable. So yeah. players do surprise you in terms yeah. of what they can achieve because you know Glenn Johnson had only just broken into West Ham's first team through Glenn Roder, who was struggling for injuries in that ill-fated year where yeah. he, you know he collapsed and had the brain tumor. Mm. We eventually got relegated. Trevor took over, but we just missed out on 42 points uh, and got relegated. But in the sort of February time, he was struggling with injuries. And Glenn said to me, Glenn Roder said to me, I'm struggling with this week for a right back. Do you think Glenn Johnson could do the job? So I said, Glenn, and my words were exact, was Glenn, you'll never know until you put him in. So Mm. he put him in. And in a struggling team, if fans can remember that, he was a revelation. Yeah, he was. He, yeah. he played with a an innocence, a freshness, mm. you know, a, a youth, a youthful enthusiasm up and down the line. He's always had great pace, great pace, you know, big and st- strong, not particularly tall, but yeah. stocky and strong. And he was up and down that line as a right back. And uh, although he wasn't big, he used to play centre back for the youth team quite a bit because he had great spring, mm. you know, could jump. Um, so... Yeah, Glenn Johnson. And then he went to Chelsea after only about 14 games. Some for like, yeah, games. Yeah, silly. yeah. And, you know, maybe if he hadn't have had that movie, he may not have gone on done the things he did. I don't know. 
Who knows? But he's took that opportunity, played with better players, obviously, and has matured, learned, got better, gone to Liverpool, played for England, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, yeah and until, they, until you put them in, you never know what they can do. Very true. He talks a lot about, obviously, Frank Lampard and Glenn Johnson, and he says that, you know, I've, I've mentioned the thing about Glenn Johnson, and he openly admitted that he's nowhere near, uh, Frank Lampard was nowhere near the best player at the team at the age of 15. There were players with more skill, more potential, and he was a middling player, he said, but look at what he achieved thanks to his work ethic. He constantly wanted to improve. Others were easier to spot. Joe Cole was the example of that. Um, he was an obvious one because of the talent he showed at a young age. He was putting in star performances. The publicity that came with Joe was it brought testing times. People expected too much too quickly, but Joe rode the storm and had a great career. Um, and the question was asked to Tony Carr as the next West Ham star out there, and Carr says he's convinced that the club has a tradition of providing opportunities. He says there are good people there, Steve Potts, Kevin Keane, um, ex ex-players that are involved as well. I said he still goes to the odd youth game. I know he was on saying that in the channel. And we'll, when he comes back on, we'll, we'll ask him about that again. He says he goes down and he has a cup of tea with some of the lads. And he says it's all very, in, it's all in good hands um, at West Ham. Yeah. yeah. And it's and it's gone back to that way. So there was a period. And, and, I, and I said to Tony, I said, to be honest, there's a period where I think there, it, was a, it was a disconnect between the youth team and West Ham and the first team under the likes of Pellegrini particularly and he agreed that he, he agreed and he's like that's the one thing david moyes has brought back is that is that sort of continue continuation between you know the first team into the and the fact is you know despite what people say you know he is a he is a everyone when we see the under 23s play on the stadium he's at every one of those games i've never seen any other west Ham managers at the home team games when we play at the london at the where it is the london stadium whether it's the bowling we know he does. He, he turns up to training sessions for the 18s and 23s. There was the other day where they had uh, where Deck turned up and Mark and Ben Johnson all turned up to watch the 18s play as well. So there is interest in you know it's not like he's not there, he's not interested in the in the development, but it's just that next step, isn't it? And, and I think it's not a function of David Moyes. I think it's a function of the PL2. It's not that next step. It's not that step to get people ready to play in the in the in the Premier League, for example. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. He actually has got like a little snippet from his book. Um, his book. What's his book called again? It's called. I thought I had it. It's. Oh, it's I thought I threw it under oh, the bus. There. I threw it under the bus. But oh, while well, well, you're finding that, that he's, he's he's given a couple of um a couple of kind of quotes from it. He says, "Beware of the early developer." And what he means by that is, is don't get carried away by a 12-year-old who's scoring loads of goals and the so-called star or the player who's running through teams because of his physicality. Be aware of that and be aware of the ones bubbling under because people catch up. Um, and that is huge for me. You know, I, I'm at the age now where my little boy who's six is playing football um, and I'm seeing parents getting angry with their yeah. kids. And I feel like I've got that potential, if I'm being brutally honest, because I've got that competitiveness about it. But I've... I, I've desperately tried to stay away from that that's why i don't want to coach him um, in a coaching capacity and, and i've stayed away from it and i've just it's all about being humble and encouraging him as a little as a little player he says relying on physicality physicality won't be enough later on so working things early and um, that he is not so good on turn the strengths into super strengths but don't think because he's running through teams at 12 he's going to do that 18 and beyond because he's not he then says passion is key to success he says are they passionate about the game do they show that training uh, during training do they love to train do they come in every day wanting to get the balls out in practice look at mark noble declan rice two great characters two great guys to emulate um he says beware of those players who you have to drag out of the dressing room encourage them to get their boots on for training but already feels like a drag to them at youth level they're going to succeed passion is one of the keys to success he says do they have humility whether it's joe cole still talking about the game with passion now or michael carrick frat lampard who have gone into coaching those guys are all grounded. He said, Mark Noble has his feet on the ground. He knows where he came from, working class roots in Cannon Town. These guys show great humility. 
Do they have the work ethic? Work ethic is key. Do you want to get better? Do they want to work at getting better or do they just want to be told what to do? Take ownership of your own development. Work at the things you feel you need to improve on. Don't wait for the coach to tell you. Do some extra after training. Don't wait to be told. Frank Lampard springs to mind. You must have that work ethic. Ethic. Mm -hmm. He says mental resilience is vital. Can they handle the downs as well as the ups? Climbing the ladder of success is not one way. Sometimes you fall off the ladder, you get dropped, you're out of form, you miss a chance, you get down about it. When you fall off the ladder, can you get back up, start climbing again? Or does it get you down so much you start blaming other people? Talent is not everything. It's not about how talented you are. Talent will only take you so far. It's about all those other character-related traits, humility, mental strength, passion. Those are the things that make a difference in the end. It's I, I'm, I, honestly, I, I I was always going to buy the book, but I've actually bought the book now, um, <laughs> and I'm actually getting copies for my sisters who've got kids um, in football teams as well. So, cool. uh, so get yourself involved. It's Tony Carr, a lifetime in the football of West Ham United. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's, it's Amazon, what, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it will be a fantastic, fantastic read. I've just given you some of the ex extracts um, from the book, but honestly, fantastic, and I, I you know. I, I wasn't on the show that you had him on, Russ, but it must have been an absolute privilege to. Oh yeah, he's a top. He's a, yeah, he's a top man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, his voice was all horse, bless him. Um, but yeah, it's just and as I said, we've never had as many questions for someone um, as we have when we had Tony on. And as I said, we were we were good. we were trying to get him for this show, but he was he's, he was busy unfortunately, and then. We're trying to get him for next week, but he's busy for that. So we're going to get him. He, he's, he wants to come back on. He loved he loved coming on and answering questions and talking about football. And so uh, we'll get yeah. him back on. But yeah, yeah, absolute legend of a man. Such a lovely Absolutely. guy. Absolutely. Um, two more players then I want to talk about is Connor Coventry. Of course, went yeah. out on loan and done really well with the MK Dons. He was told by David Moyes, go out, go and get experience. Um, Mark Noble spoke to him, come back and we'll reevaluate what happens this summer. Um, I think this is probably the make or break summer for a player like Connor Coventry. Yeah. If you are watching, leave us your comments about Connor Coventry. But what do you think, Russ? Yeah, it's a make or break. I mean, it is unfortunately it's a Josh Cullen situation, really, isn't it? It's there's this it there's so many parallels between the two of them. Um, it is make or break this season. Uh, as I said, he didn't have a particularly good first loan spell at Peterborough this season when he went out on NK Dons. It was a lot better. Um, and you look at someone like how I mean, the thing is, for a player like jo for a player like Connor Coventry, he's going to be looking at how well Josh has do done at Andelect. Could be at Burnley if if uh, if if Vincent Company brings him over there. He was captain at Andelect, and you know that that gives him hope. You know, if he doesn't break into the first team this year, then he could make have a have a great career outside of outside of West Ham. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a make or break for him this year. You would think sure. though, you would think that if there was ever a season where Coventry's going to get a look in, it's the season that West Ham are lacking two mm. players that we had in that position. Mark Noble retiring, Alex Kroll yeah. probably leaving the club, which leaves two spaces available. So it gives, it, 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 and there is a space because if we are in the market for a central midfielder, if it's James Ward-Prowse, if it's Conor Gallagher, whoever it is, that we're looking to bring in, you can't help but think that there is an opportunity for um, yeah. a player like Coventry but kicking same, about. In the same way, it might. There, there was a there was an opportunity for him. The season just gone, but then we get Alex Cross coming in. <coughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? So it's like, well, okay, if that was you know, if, if that decision of Alex Kroll coming in was to allow Josh Cullen to go out and get game time, now that's now that's not that that seems. A reasonable assumption, yeah. um, in the fact that Alex Crow didn't get any game time anyway, apart from one, you know, a couple of games. But you know, so Josh Cullen wouldn't have got any game time anyway. But he's he managed to go and play a number of games for Peterborough and MK Dons, and Coventry. that would help his development. Oh, was that? You keep seeing Josh Cullen, but it's fine. Sorry, oh, Josh. Yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Coventry. Um, so it made him develop his get more games, get more reps under his belt, and so. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, it's that sort of double-edged sword, really, isn't it? It's the same thing with the goalkeeper situation. But I think, I think, I think, I think, you know, we, we, let, let's go on to Josh Cullen. I mean, I know people are jesting about him potentially going to Burnley, but there's absolutely nothing to say that West Ham could be looking at him and going, no, you know, he, he, he lives and he lives and breathes the club. He what there was a link. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying there was a link. But 
I mean, let's take a little look and see what actually happened with Josh Cullen when he left West Ham. He's played nearly every minute of Anderlecht's regular season fixtures in the 21-22 season to cement his status, and he is a fan favourite in the Belgium capital. 70-odd appearances to his name for Anderlecht. Yes, you heard me right. 70-odd appearances, and it couldn't have turned out any better for him. His ever-presence brings an ensuring reliability um, of passing prowess across 34 league games this season. He completed 87.6% of his passes for Andelect. And in the last five games in particular, Russ, you can see pass completions of 81%, 87%, 83%, 92%, and 89%. Um, So he has gone abroad and taken that chance with two two hands. Um, He's got a selfless work rate, which is something that West Ham like um, and he is obviously a Republic of Ireland international and he does it for both Ireland and Andalect as well and company absolutely loves him he says yeah. he's the most unselfish player and um, he comes after in the background if the team wins it's because he did a lot of the jobs that the others could not do a bit like what happened with Suchek in my opinion yeah. this year he says if you look away from his passing stats and glaring statistics Um, Cullen only has registered one goal and zero assists but if you take him as a kind of Xavi type player for club and country Mm -hmm. he is the heartbeat of the operation for Anderlecht Um, and by adding the odd high risk pass to his game he would have a better chance of of bettering that return but there's absolutely a huge amount of evidence that his development has came on leaps and bounds by being given game time Um, and people can call it a, a crap league a crap league all you want, but he's gone away, he's done his job, and it's led to the following stats. He's in the top 2% of players for both pass quantity, pass success rate in the division, while he's in the top 10% for passes to the final third, progressive passes and forward passes. He's the top 1% in the Belgian league for midfielders for defensive and offensive dual success. Um, I mean, what else can you ask for for a player that loves the club yeah i mean he's he, you know he's 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 gone a slightly different path rather than dropping down divisions he's gone abroad and he's made a hell of a hell of a good job of it um yeah. and as you said he's he's, he's captain and elect you know and, and i know it's people say oh it's you know, the, the, the league or whatever but you know you have to you play for what's in front of you and the fact is you know it's probably more comparable than going to play for Scunthorpe or someone like that. Do you know what I mean? It's it's not like that. You know, he's playing in a in a in a decent league. You know, he is decent, and he's he's getting plenty of game time, and he is playing really well. And as you said, Vinnie Company is is. I mean, he knows a good player. He he was a slouch when he was playing, and so you know he he can he can identify a good player, and he has. And I think yeah, yeah. I, I think he's one of those players that I think we've always kept an eye on when he left. In the same way, it's almost like a loan deal, but it wasn't like, you know, it's almost like, yeah, yeah it's almost like we've kept them, but on a short leash. And the fact is, he still comes, you know, when he, when Andelect, I think he still comes to some of the games, he's a massive West Ham fan, his yeah. family are West Ham fans, and um, obviously still has a lot of friends at the club and stuff like that. So, I but it probably, you know, he's a sort of player that you can't help but think it breaks his heart when he leaves the club. Yeah. You know, he thinks like, oh, I want to try and emulate what Mark Noble's done and some of the, the players of the past have done, but it's not mm. worked out for him. And, and he's thought, Do you know what, for my career, I need to go away. And, I, and fair play to him, he's gone abroad. Like, that's a hard decision to do, yeah. and, but he's made it work with an abundance. And, and do you know what, Russ, if he had never been at West Ham in his previous career um, or his previous life, and we looked at all those stats, and or, or we looked at what he's done at Andelect and we look at the style of player and the player he's become, mm. the man he's become out there, you would be looking at him thinking, who's this Irish centre midfielder? Well, if he was called uh, Josh Collini or something like that, you know, or, <laughs> you know, we'd be, we'd be like, oh, he's, this guy's all right. This guy's all right looking at his stats. Yeah. Um, but even away from the stats, though, I mean, he, he, he just seems to have taken on that role as the the engine of the team. The the, the guy mm. the, the, you've got to go through the gear sticks, and and he's the gear stick. He controls absolutely everything, doesn't he? He's, and it's um, <laughs> Colin left for the waffles. <laughs> 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 oh, 
<laughs> sounds, uh, I mean, what do you think? This comment sounds mad, but it seems like Moyes has a problem with less physical players without him taking into account technical prowess. I think so. I, I think I think he I think he's he's not a. Um, I mean, you look at the likes of even the likes of Lanzini. You know, he he is, but you know, he's in in the last sort of eighteen months when he has played, he looks a lot. He's a lot harder to get off the ball than he was before. He doesn't throw himself around like he used to. He used to be quite lightweight, I thought Lanzini used to be. I think for him, it's for, for Moyes, I think there's it's about it is about being solid physically. And um and, and and that maybe, you know, that's maybe that's some reasons why, you know and again, the thing is with, with kids is they develop at different rates at different ages as well. So it's really difficult to you know, I can understand when Patsy said, you know, he doesn't even really look at them until he, they're twenty twenty one, really, in terms of their physical development and People like Declan Rice being exceptions to the rule, really. Um, it's it's a, it's a, it's a tricky one, and, and and again, what we say with Tim Breaker, you know, you could get you could bring his youth team player in, or you could go to France and buy someone who's got eighty games under his belt already. Yeah. It's mental. Yeah, but there you go. Josh khan has got nearly eighty games under his belt. That's what I mean. That's <laughs> what I mean. Mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and he could, and he, he's he's done the, and you look at Reese Oxford as well. Same thing, yeah. you know. He's he's taken him a while to get to the, his his the right place. Um, and but he's on he's, the path now. Isn't he's he? on the path, now, and it's yeah. a little bit like you look at Afalai and you think, yeah, you're starting to go on that path, etc. Trev Chub makes a point here. See, I mean, coaches don't always know how youngsters will respond when thrown in. Mentality is underestimated. I coach, obviously not at the level, but I've had some sign for Premier League clubs, so that's, that's good. Good on you as well, Trev. As well, yeah, Trev, man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Scarborough Hammers the same. Whenever I've watched on the twenty threes, Equa really stood for me. And mm. um, can really kick on in the coming seasons. I mean, I saw him. I saw him at the when the first training camp at St Andrews. Mm. And I mean, I'm a big lad myself, as you know, Russ. But he's I was big, I was big, taken yeah. aback by the size of this yeah, young lad coming lad. through. He's, he's a big, big, Pierre, he's a big strong. Boy. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But again, he physic. But then you know, on twenty threes, he is physically dominating. But he's physically dominating his peers. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? So if, again, someone like that, his his game is based on being very physical. So does that physicality then move into the into the Premier League? You're playing with a lot stronger people. You yeah. know, people who aren't 18, they're 30, and so it makes a big difference. And I think you know, there's that's the trouble when your your game is so heavily reliant on being sort of physically dominating. You know, I mean, you look at the big players like the likes of Vieira, the likes of uh, Yaya Toure. That's sort of a that's that's what Pierre's like. Yeah. Um, but it's whether he can then move it up Step. to another level. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Peter saying if we don't get players in, Moyes will have no choice but to blood some of the under twenty threes who aren't yep. really kids anymore. Well, yeah, I, I think that I think that every single season, Peter. But what we did did see from Moyes is that he relied heavily on fifteen, probably fifteen players this season. Of those fifteen players, we've lost Fredericks, Kroll, probably Noble, and Yarmolenko. Yarmolenko. Um, so that's four players down. It looks like Masawaku is going to be heading out the door, possibly one other, and if, if if at all, one other. And then some of the young players are going out the door. So mm. I, 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 he's going to be in the market. That's why I have no doubt he's going to go into the market. If he doesn't go into the market, then I will be shitting myself for the season, Russ. Yeah. Because he has to go into the market. And then, and if he doesn't go into the market, then he is relying heavily on a lot of the youth players. But we can't be seeing links of Perkins leaving, Langello leaving, all that sort of stuff, you know. Mm. So yeah, I think it will be, but I think there's it's certain ones who have already who who's placed in the squad is already there. So I think Ashby takes over from um, Fredericks. I obviously I can see Coventry coming in and taking over one of the two mid central midfield spots left by Noble and Kral. I can see um, Okaflex coming in maybe as the replacement for Yarmolenko. Um, or or maybe Sonny Perkins if he stays around, you know. So I think there will be spots for them, but then it's whether Moyes plays them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's a good point, though. And I know of caution. Look at what happened with Odebiku. Yeah, got exactly. thrown in when he did something special. Was out of his depth. Got pulled. Was never heard of again. I know, and I know that. But I, when I think about that game in particular, I think that was probably not the best decision no. by Moyes. I think pulling him off probably highlighted. I think crap that, the game was going yeah and for I think that highlighted I think also yeah. that high for me that highlighted maybe to Moyes actually it might not be a good idea to throw boys in all the time 
Yeah. You know, it might be, it might be, that, that might have just, I mean, I know, I mean, it's only one game, but still, you know, you, you saw the effect it had in the lad, probably, and thinking, actually, don't want to put the rest of these guys through that, which might stunt their development. Um, yeah. So, yeah. it's, uh, again, it's, it's a tricky one, isn't it, really? Yeah. Dalek wants to know, did you go soccer aid? No. No. Because if you did, the music was good, so it means your music's not normally good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Cheers, Dalek. Peter is saying we all know this time next year Okaflex will not be here but we'll have to wait and see um, the game is so fast paced now and so many players get injured and never make this step up if it's hard and then hard to play young, uh, youngsters all games are so big as in they Cook yeah I mean Russ we've been on for an hour I've really enjoyed talking about mm. the young players the youth and, and getting That's a right. bit nitty gritty with it so um, I hope you have everyone in the chat if you have please leave us your comments um, and give us your feedback and we'll, we will go into a little bit more depth about this again because we'll, we'll bring on the man himself tony carr and um, i know you've got loads of questions to ask him from the last show there'll be probably sh shed loads more coming in when you do the next show but i think it will be definitely worthwhile talking about can he see any of the younger players stepping up this season getting closer to the season you know definitely definitely yeah. and i think yeah as i said he's it's um i think it's good though because you know it's nice to like have a, have a bit of a step back as well and, and look at and, and just sort of have a bit of a Bit of a debate, really. Really, it's really it's sort of go through and, and and sort of get your views in terms of viewers and, and and go back and look at some of the interviews we've had, which when you start piecing them together makes quite a compelling story. I think in terms of, you know, for me clearly the way the the way football is set up. I mean, that's not even going in and talking about. You know, I remember we, when we interviewed Tim Breaker, we asked him about you know being a on the old YTS scheme at school at, at, at Luton and he would be on the pitch doing the divots at half time and cleaning boots and stuff like that. And they don't do that no more. Yeah. The kids don't do it no more. And I think you, you miss, you know, there's, it's like, it's almost like you've earned your place when you, you know, cause you've done the, the hard grafting, you've swept the dressing rooms, you've, you've done the pitches, you've done the boots. So when you go into the first team, you sort of have that appreciation of being in there. Um, I don't, I think that's something the kid, the, the U team players don't have now. They're very much pampered, as you said, from such an early age now that it's almost, it comes to them. And I think that's, that's when you get situations like maybe the Sonny Perkins situation at the moment yeah. because of that, maybe, I don't know, yeah. but it's, it does seem a, a bit of a lost, uh, a lost art. Uh, in terms of under those those sort of kids really sort of grasping when they get into the first team that opportunity. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, listen, thank you very much for everyone in the chat for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed that sh tonight's show. Um, if you are interested in becoming a subscriber, then please hit that subscribe button just now. Alongside that subscribe button, there is a bell notification. If you hit that bell notification, that will notify you when our shows are going to go live and when they do go live. So it's definitely worthwhile hitting that. If you are interested in becoming a channel member, and we did get a new channel member tonight, and that is Dalek himself, the cyber leader. So thank you very much, Mr. Dalek. Then please click the join option when you do look on our YouTube channel. And um, we're doing monthly draws and soon to be weekly draws for prizes as well for the members. Um, and join us again tomorrow for a double whammy. You've got the daily and then you've got the hammers headlines yeah. kicking about as well. Um, may, maybe, maybe, maybe a, a breaking news. Maybe a breaking news. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Stand, stand by your beds. <laughs> and as we always do when we end the show we like to thank all you channel members um for supporting the channel as you always do but before we go russ any final words no thank you uh i hope everyone has a good night's sleep it's it's hot out there tonight open your windows close your curtains <laughs> stay safe and come on you irons ciao ciao for now
It's like a family tree.